Geography of Ghana Ghana is a country in Africa, along the Gulf of Guinea, just a few degrees north of the equator. Ghana encompasses plains, low hills, rivers, Lake Volta, the world's largest artificial lake, Davi Island and Babawasi Island on the South Atlantic Ocean coast off Ghana. Ghana can be divided into four different geographical eco-regions. The coastline is mostly a low, sandy shore backed by plains and scrub and intersected by several rivers and streams. The northern part of Ghana features high plains. Southwest and south-central Ghana is made up of a forested plateau region consisting of the Ashanti Uplands and the Kwahu Plateau. The hilly Aquapim Toko ranges are found along Ghana's eastern international border. The Volta Basin takes up most of south-central Ghana and Ghana's highest point is Mount Afija which is and is found in the Aquapim Toko ranges. The climate is tropical and the eastern coastal belt is warm and comparatively dry. The southwest corner of Ghana is hot and humid, and the north of Ghana is warm and wet. Lake Volta, the world's largest artificial lake, extends through small portions of southeastern Ghana and many tributary rivers such as the Odi and Afram rivers flow into it. The northernmost part of Ghana is Pulmakong and the southernmost part of Ghana is Cape Three Points near Aksum. Ghana lies between latitudes 4 degrees and 12 degrees north. South Ghana contains evergreen and semi deciduous forests consisting of trees such as mahogany, odum, ebony, and it also contains much of Ghana's oil palms and mangroves with shade trees, baobabs, and acacias found in the northern part of Ghana. Ghana, which lies in the center of the Gulf of Guinea coast, 2,420 kilometers of land borders with three countries, Burkina Faso, 602 kilometers, to the north, Ivory Coast, 720 km, to the west, and Togo, 1,098 km, to the east. To the south are the Gulf of Guinea and the Atlantic Ocean. Its southernmost coast at Cape Three Points is 4 degrees 30 north of the equator. From here, the country extends inland for some 670 km to about 11 degrees north. The distance across the widest part, between longitude 1 degree 12 east and longitude 3 degrees 15 west measures about 560 kilometers. The Greenwich Meridian, which passes through London, also traverses the eastern part of Ghana at Tema. The terrain consists small desert mountains with the Kwahu Plateau in the south-central area. Half of Ghana lies less than above sea level, and the highest point is. The coastline is mostly a low, sandy shore backed by plains and scrub and intersected by several rivers and streams, most of which are navigable only by canoe. A tropical rainforest belt, broken by heavily forested hills and many streams and rivers, extends northward from the shore, near the Ivory Coast frontier. This area, known as the Ashanti, produces most of Ghana's cocoa, minerals, and timber. North of this belt, the elevation varies from above sea level and is covered by low bush, park like savanna, and grassy plains. Irrigated land, 309 km, 2003. Total renewable water resources, 53.2 km, 2011. Ghana is characterized in general by low physical relief. The Precambrian rock system that underlies most of the nation has been worn down by erosion almost to a plain. The highest elevation in Ghana, Mount Afija in the Aquapim Toko Ranges, rises 880 meters above sea level. There are four distinct geographical regions. Low plains stretch across the southern part of Ghana. To their north lie three regions, the Ashanti Uplands, the Aquapim Toko Ranges, and the Volta Basin. The fourth region, the High Plains, occupies the northern and northwestern sector of Ghana. Like most West African countries, Ghana has no natural harbors. Because strong surf pounds the shoreline, two artificial harbors were built at Takoradi and Tema, the latter completed in 1961, to accommodate Ghana's shipping needs. The low plains comprise the four subregions of the coastal savanna, the Volta Delta, the Accra Plains, and the Akan Lowlands or Penna Plains. A narrow strip of grassy and scrubby coast runs from a point near Takoradi in the west to the Togo border in the east. This coastal savanna, only about 8 km in width at its western end, stretches eastward through the Accra Plains, where it widens to more than 8 km, and terminates at the southeastern corner of the country at the lower end of the Aquapim Toko Ranges. Almost flat and featureless, the Accra Plains descend gradually to the Gulf from a height of about 150 meters. The topography east of the city of Accra is marked by a succession of ridges and spoon-shaped valleys. 
The hills and slopes in this area are the favored lands for cultivation. Shifting cultivation is the usual agricultural practice because of the swampy nature of the very low-lying areas during the rainy seasons and the periodic blocking off the rivers at the coast by sandbars that form lagoons. A plan to irrigate the Accra Plains was announced in 1984. Should this plan come to reality, much of the area could be open to large-scale cultivation. To the west of Accra, the low plains contain wider valleys and rounded low hills, with occasional rocky headlands. In general the land is flat and covered with grass and scrub. Dense groves of coconut palms front the coastline. Several commercial centers, including Winneba, Salt Pond, and Cape Coast are located here. Winneba has a small livestock industry and palm tree cultivation is expanding in the area away from the coast, with the predominant occupation of the coastal inhabitants being fishing via dugout canoe. The Volta Delta, which forms a distinct subregion of the Low Plains, extends into the Gulf of Guinea in the extreme southeast. The delta's rock formation, consisting of thick layers of sandstone, some limestone, and silt deposits, is flat, featureless, and relatively young. As the delta grew outward over the centuries, sandbars developed across the mouths of the Volta and smaller rivers that empty into the Gulf in the same area, forming numerous lagoons, some quite large, making road construction difficult. To avoid the lowest lying areas the road between Accra and Keta makes a detour inland just before reaching Ada, and approaches Keta from the east along the narrow spit on which the town stands. Road links with Keta continue to be a problem. By 1989 it was estimated that more than 3,000 houses in the town had been swallowed by flooding from the lagoon. About 1,500 other houses were destroyed by erosion caused by the powerful waves of the sea. This flat Silt composed delta region with its abundance of water supports shallot, corn, and cassava cultivation in the region. The sandy soil of the delta gave rise to the copper industry. Salt making, from the plentiful supply in the dried beds of the lagoons, provides additional employment. The main occupation of the delta people is fishing, an industry that supplies dried and salted fish to other parts of the country. The largest part of the low plains is the Akan lowlands. Some experts prefer to classify this region as a subdivision of the Ashanti uplands because of the many characteristics they share. Unlike the uplands, the height of the Akan lowlands is generally between sea level and 150 meters. Some ranges and hills rise to about 300 meters, but few exceed 600 meters. The lowlands that lie to the south of the Ashanti uplands receive the many rivers that make their way to the sea. The Akan lowlands contain the basins of the Denshu River, the Pra River, the Ankoba River, and the Tano River, all of which play important roles in the economy of Ghana. The Denshu River Basin, location of the important urban centers of Kafarijua and Nsawam in the eastern lowlands, has an undulating topography. Many of the hills here have craggy summits, which give a striking appearance to the landscape. The upper section of the Pra River Basin, to the west of the Denshu, is relatively flat. The topography of its lower reaches resembles that of the Denshu Basin and is a rich cocoa and food producing region. The valley of the Byram River, one of the main tributaries of the Pra, is Ghana's most important diamond producing area. The Ankoba River Basin and the middle and lower basins of the Tano River to the west of the lowlands form the largest subdivision of the Akan lowlands. Here, annual rainfall between 1,500 and 2,150 mm helps assure a dense forest cover. In addition to timber, the area is rich in minerals. The Tarqua gold field, the diamond operations of the Bonsu Valley, and high grade manganese deposits are all found in this area. The middle and lower Tano basins have been intensely explored for oil and natural gas since the mid 1980s. The lower basins of the Pra, Byram, Denshu, and Ankoba rivers are also sites for palm tree cultivation. Comprising the southern Ashanti uplands and the Kwahu Plateau. The Ashanti uplands lie just north of the Akan lowlands and stretch from the Ivory Coast border in the west to the elevated edge of the Volta Basin in the east. Stretching in a northwest to southeast direction, the Kwahu Plateau extends 193 kilometers between Kafarijua in the east and Wenchi in the northwest. The average elevation of the plateau is about 450 meters, rising to a maximum of 762 meters. The relatively cool temperatures of the plateau were attractive to Europeans, particularly missionaries who founded many well-known schools and colleges in this region. The plateau forms one of the important physical divides in Ghana. From its northeastern slopes, the Ephraim and Prudence rivers flow into the Volta River, while from the opposite side, the Pra, Byram, Ofen, Tano, and other rivers flow south toward the sea. 
The plateau also marks the northernmost limit of the forest zone. Although large areas of the forest cover have been destroyed through farming, enough deciduous forest remains to shade the headwaters of the rivers that flow from the plateau. The southern Ashanti uplands, extending from the foot of the Kwahu Plateau in the north to the lowlands in the south, slope gently from an elevation of about 300 meters in the north to about 150 meters in the south. The region contains several hills and ranges as well as several towns of historical and economic importance, including Kumasi, Ghana's second largest city and former capital of the Asante. Abwasi and Kanango, two of the country's gold mining centers, are also located here. The region is Ghana's chief producer of cocoa, and its tropical forests continue to be a vital source of timber for the lumber industry. Taking the central part of Ghana, the Volta Basin covers about 45% of the nation's total land surface. Its northern section, which lies above the upper part of Lake Volta, rises to a height of 150 to 215 meters above sea level. Elevations of the Konkori Scarp to the west and the Gambega Scarp to the north reach from 300 to 460 meters. To the south and the southwest, the basin is less than 300 meters. The Kwahu Plateau marks the southern end of the basin, and forms a natural part of the Ashanti uplands. The basin is characterized by poor soil, generally of voltaine sandstone. Annual rainfall averages between 1,000 and 1,140 mm. The most widespread vegetation type is savanna, the woodlands of which, depending on local soil and climatic conditions, may contain such trees as red ironwood and shea. The basin's population, principally farmers, is low in density, especially in the central and northwestern areas of the basin, where tsetse flies are common. Archaeological finds indicate that the region was once more heavily populated. Periodic burning occurred over extensive areas for perhaps more than a millennium, exposing the soil to excessive drying and erosion, rendering the area less attractive to cultivators. In contrast with the rest of the region are the Ephraim Plains, located in the southeastern corner of the basin. Here the terrain is low, averaging 60 to 150 meters in elevation, and annual rainfall is between 1,140 and about 1,400 millimeters. Near the Ephraim River, much of the surrounding countryside is flooded or swampy during the rainy seasons. With the creation of Lake Volta, 8,500 kilometers in area, in the mid-1960s, much of the Ephraim Plains was submerged. Despite the construction of roads to connect communities displaced by the lake, road transportation in the region remains poor. Renewed efforts to improve communications, to enhance agricultural production, and to improve standards of living began in earnest in the mid-1980s. The general terrain in the northern and northwestern part of Ghana outside the Volta Basin consists of a dissected plateau, which averages between 150 and 300 meters in elevation and, in some places, is even higher. Rainfall averages between 1,000 and 1,150 millimeters annually, although in the northwest it is closer to 1,350 millimeters. Soils in the high plains are more arable than those in the Volta Basin and the population density is considerably higher. Grain and cattle production are the major economic activities in the high plains of the northern region. Since the mid-1980s, when former United States President Jimmy Carter's Global 2000 program, C. Glossary, adopted Ghana as one of a select number of African countries whose local farmers were to be educated and financially supported to improve agricultural production, there has been a dramatic increase in grain production in northern Ghana. The virtual absence of tsetse flies in the region has led to increased livestock raising as a major occupation in the north. The region is Ghana's largest producer of cattle. Ghana is drained by a large number of streams and rivers. In addition, there are a number of coastal lagoons, the huge man made Lake Volta, and Lake Basam Tawi created by a meteorite, southeast of Kumasi and which has no outlet to the sea. In the wetter south and southwest areas of Ghana, the river and stream pattern is denser. But in the area north of the Kwahu Plateau, the pattern is much more open, making access to water more difficult. Several streams and rivers also dry up or experience reduced flow during the dry seasons of the year, while flooding during the rainy seasons is common. The major drainage divide runs from the southwest part of the Aquapim Toko Ranges northwest through the Kwahu Plateau and then irregularly westward to the Ivory Coast border. Almost all the rivers and streams north of this divide form part of the Volta system. Extending about 1,600 kilometers in length and draining an area of about 388,000 square kilometers, of which about 158,000 kilometers lie within Ghana, the Volta and its tributaries, 
such as the Afram River and the Odi River, drain more than two-thirds of Ghana. To the south of the divide are several smaller, independent rivers. The most important of these are the Pra River, the Tano River, the Ankobra River, the Byram River, and the Denshu River. With the exception of smaller streams that dry up in the dry seasons or rivers that empty into inland lakes, all the major rivers in Ghana flow into the Gulf of Guinea directly or as tributaries to other major rivers. The Ankobra and Tano are navigable for considerable distances in their lower reaches. Navigation on the Volta River has changed significantly since 1964. Construction of the dam at Akasambo, about 80 kilometers upstream from the coast, created the vast Lake Volta and the associated 1,020 megawatt hydroelectric project. Arms of the lake extended into the lower lying areas, forcing the relocation of 78,000 people to newly created townships on the lake's higher banks. The Black Volta River and the White Volta River flow separate lie into the lake. Before their confluence was submerged, the rivers came together in the middle of Ghana to form the main Volta River. The Odi River and the Dhaka River, the principal tributaries of the Volta in the eastern part of Ghana, and the Prudence River, the Sena River, and the Afram River, major tributaries to the north of the Kawu Plateau, also empty into flooded extensions of the lake and their river valleys. Lake Volta is a rich source of fish, and its potential as a source for irrigation is reflected in an agricultural mechanization agreement signed in the late 1980s to irrigate the Afram Plains. The lake is navigable from Akasambo through Yeji in the middle of Ghana. A 24-meter pontoon was commissioned in 1989 to link the from plains to the west of the lake with the lower Volta region to the east. Hydroelectricity generated from Akasambo supplies Ghana, Togo, and Benin. On the other side of the Kwahu Plateau from Lake Volta are several river systems, including the Pra, Ankobra, Tano, and Denchu. The Pra is the easternmost and the largest of the three principal rivers that drain the area south of the Volta Divide. Rising south of the Kwahu Plateau and flowing southward, the Pra enters the Gulf of Guinea east of Takoradi. In the early part of the 20th century, the Pra was used extensively to flow timber to the coast for export. This trade is now carried by road and rail transportation. The Ankobra, which flows to the west of the Pra, has a relatively small drainage basin. It rises in the hilly region of Bibiani and flows in a southerly direction to enter the Gulf just west of Aksum. Small craft can navigate approximately 80 kilometers inland from its mouth. At one time, the Ankobra helped transport machinery to the gold mining areas in the vicinity of Tarqua. The Tano, which is the westernmost of the three rivers, rises near Tekaman in the center of the country. It also flows in a southerly direction, and it empties into a lagoon in the southeast corner of Ivory Coast. Navigation by steam launch is possible on the southern sector of the Tano for about 70 kilometers. A number of rivers are found to the east of the Pra. The two most important are the Denshu and Iensu, both of which rise in the Aethwa range, and which are important as sources of water for Accra and Winneba respectively. The country has one large natural lake, Lake Basumtawi, located about 32 kilometers southeast of Kumasi. It occupies the steep-sided meteoric crater and has an area of about 47 square kilometers. A number of small streams flow into Lake Basumtawi, but there is no drainage from it. Apart from providing an opportunity for fishing for local inhabitants, the lake serves as a tourist attraction. Dry, dusty, harmaton winds occur from January to March. Ghana is also prone to droughts, and was severely affected by floods in 2007 and 2009. Environmental issues include recurrent drought in the north, severely affecting agricultural activities, deforestation, overgrazing, soil erosion. Poaching and habitat destruction threatens wildlife populations, water pollution, and inadequate supplies of potable water. International agreements, ratified. Biodiversity, climate change, desertification, endangered species, environmental modification, law of the sea, ozone layer protection, ship pollution, tropical timber 83, tropical timber 94, wetlands. Marine life conservation, Volta Lake. The largest artificial lake in the world, extends from the Akasambo Dam in southeastern Ghana to the town of Yape, to the north. The lake generates electricity, provides inland transportation, and is a potentially valuable resource for irrigation and fish farming. Ghana has a large and well-preserved national park system that includes Kakam National Park in the central region, Mole National Park in the northern region, Daga National Park along the western bank of the Volta Lake. This is a list of the extreme points of Ghana, the points that are farther north, south, 
east or west than any other location. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.